Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Better With Mods. Today I'm going to be covering a little more in detail of the hopper and vases, things that people overlook and how they can actually be extremely dangerous to you and others. But first, before we cover the dangers, I should uh, definitely cover some of the benefits. Uh, first and foremost, if you watch my previous Bit by Bits, uh, you may have seen that there's such a thing as a turntable, which will allow you access to things like vases. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, using a saw in order to make things like a hopper, or a filtered hopper in this case. Uh, so, with no further ado, let, let's start off with the vases, because it's a little bit simpler and a little bit different. Uh, a lot of people think, All right, what, it, it's just a vase. Well, it, it's kind of a treasure pot, as well as a, a danger pot. So, to start with, you'd want to make the unfired vase on the turntable as I displayed in my previous video. Uh, and then if you notice in any of these that have been colored, you can of course color them. Uh, they are very useful in that aspect. You just take whatever you want and put a uh, color next to it. The only way that you can uh, actually harvest these is with either a silk touch pick uh, of some sort or a block dispenser. Not a regular vanilla dispenser, a block dispenser from Better With Mods, which is a very end game item. Uh, otherwise, you put it down. Uh, the only way to actually take care of it is then to, well, break it. But it, it has a few functions. One is to act like a treasure chest. Now I have some over here that are set up. Uh, if I take some of these items here, I've got some uh, gold ingots. I'm just using this because gold just, like I said, treasure chest, treasure pot, right? You're thinking Legend of Zelda. That's exactly the idea. You can put one of uh, any type in here you want. I'm clicking several times. Let me actually go into uh, uh, survival mode here so you can see. Let's put all these gold uh, ingots in there. I can put some golden apples in this one. I can put a bottle. Oh, enchanting. No, I can't. Uh, I just threw that by accident. Let's take a couple of items here. I can put my battle axe in here. Uh, I can put a uh, composite bow in here. I could try putting other stuff, but it'll just end up, you know, populating in the world instead of actually being placed inside of it. So it's it, it kind of works that way. And then when you break it, you can break it by hand if you want. I'm just going to use this matic because it's a bit quicker. Then I can pick up a whole bunch of gold. Yes, I clicked it uh, several times before I put those five ingots in there and this and so on. So if I want, I could try to put these in here, but instead you see I'm trying to eat it. It makes the noise that I'm putting things in there, but when I break it, I only get the, the bottle of enchanting back because that was the first item that I tried putting in there. Uh, then I put here, break this, I get my bow back, and so on. So it makes a noise, but whatever the first item was that you clicked on it is going to be the item that you're going to want to get. Now here's where it gets a bit dangerous with vases. You can actually take some of this blasting oil, which I showed how to make some of this in the last video, and place that inside. And here's something else, is that uh, when you put this down, uh, you can actually destroy this. I'm in, I'm in survival right now with an arrow. Pretty cool, right? Well, that one over there has some of the uh, blasting oil in it. So when you shoot it, it blows up, uh, which means that you could actually set this on top of, like I put um, a layer of grass underneath this pot here, and then underneath that layer of grass, are a lot of TNT. So you could feasibly just kind of... Wah! Yeah, take out a very large area <laughs> with a lot of a lot of explosions. Uh, so yeah, you, you could set up some really <laughs> intricate traps with this because it does do a small explosion. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I've, I've got a friend here coming in. Get out of here. No, I don't, I don't want any. Okay, so as you can see, it can be very destructive, uh, but also very useful for uh, setting traps. And if people were to uh, break a vase with the oil in it by hand, it blows up that way too. So yeah, you can definitely set some traps. Uh, you might want to lure your friends in with some free gold bars or something like that in some of them, and then one of them might have some special surprise in there perhaps. Uh, but But that's just a thought of one way that you can use it. Now let's uh, let's move on to the hoppers. The filtered hopper is actually a very unique and helpful tool. Let's let's have a little nom here because I'm feeling a little bit uh, low on power. Uh, so it, it it has of course the uh, the recipes on here which are somewhat helpful, but it doesn't really show you everything that it can be filtered with in this. Uh, my my JEI or uh, just enough items is actually kind of failing me in this aspect. There are much more that it that it can accept for the filters. Uh, allowing things in here. Now, if not powered, meaning it does not have um, an axle uh, attached to it like I do to this one here, I've got an axle running to it. If it's not powered, 
things will only just drop into it. If it is powered like this, then uh, items will actually go into a, an inventory below it. For example, if I stand up here on top of this hopper, it is currently being powered. I drop this uh, grass block on top. It goes through and into the large chest. Now, if I go into one that is not powered, it's not going to do so. For example, I can just break here, put a chest down underneath, and then I can throw a chest down in top, and you can see it actually just stays there. The reason being is that it is currently not powered, as I said. So that is just one of the uh, the things that you should know about the uh, filtered hopper, is that it, it acts kind of with a stop and an internal inventory that's bigger than your vanilla hopper. Now, alternately, you can use it to filter all sorts of results. Of course, whether it outputs to its own inventory or to an external one is entirely up to you if you want to power it or not. Let's start over here with grates. Of course, you can make these grates. Uh, let's actually look at the recipe here with, you know, your, your standard setup. You're going to need a saw in order to do this. But uh, you can make them out of the, the basic woods and so on. In this case, I'm using acacia or acacia or whatever you want to call it. But that's what I'm using in this example. What it allows you to do is items or blocks uh, or, or items and blocks, if you want, with a max, stacks si a max stack size of one, which means things that you cannot stack together. Uh, things like... Uh, this. You see, it's got like a, a durability bar, so you know you can't stack it. Armor. I can't... It'll go in there. But if I try putting things like these gold ingots, there's 19 of them. Throw that in there. It just kind of bounces off the top, and then I pick them back up. I can always get this back, and so on. So that's how a grate will work in this case. So that's... That's great. Uh, let's move on to the next type of filter that we have, and that's a stackable items and blocks with iron bars. So this is the opposite of that one. That is where only one item that will potentially have NBT data or has durability bars most likely uh, can, can go in here. There may be some other items that will not stack as well. Perhaps like a, a mushroom stew might not might work over there. But uh, like over here, stackable items and blocks. Uh, this here, if I put it in here, the stack will go in and the single item will not. So it's the reverse of that one. It's just as simple as, uh, you know, one great type versus another. Now let's go over to this one here. We've got ladders. That's right, we've got ladders as a filter. This allows items only, no blocks. So as an example of an item, a wooden hoe, I cannot place this in the world. I can use it, but I can't place it down as a block. So that's, that's going to be an item. If I have something like a grass block, it actually says block in the name, so it's not going to filter and will just stay there. Uh, so that's kind of the example there. So you can actually filter out um, items from like mob drops and stuff. In this case, you could uh, filter out further and further. You could always, uh, you know, specify how you want them to all sort as you would so desire. It, it's pretty cool, allowing you to uh, sort things in inventories. Uh, and con to continue on with this, we've got things like uh, the slats. Slats are similar to the grates in color selection and so on, uh, and they, they function also as like a fence. But yes, both grates and slats are just one block tall. Uh, I have a, a step assist mod in here that allows me to walk on one, t one block tall items. If I were to have a fence, just for example, I spawned a couple in. I cannot walk over the fence uh, because of that uh, with my step assist. So therefore, these will not be good for holding animals in that can jump one block high. But uh, And the same with the grates. But still, none the same. Uh, this is not implemented as of the time of this video. It is probably going to be implemented shortly. And that is that you can actually uh, put in here string and paper will be filtered out. It might actually have some other things as well, uh, but as far as I'm aware, those are the only items that are likely to uh, go through there. And that, that, like I said, that may change in the future. Uh, look out for the uh, updates uh, coming from that. Now, here we go. We've got a trap door, wooden trap door. Blocks only, no items. So this, this is kind of the opposite of the other one where it's items only. Uh, this one here with the ladders, this is just the, the reverse, blocks items. Uh, so there are blocks only rather no items so if i take the wooden hoe in this case it bounces instead of the grass blocks and so on so it's just a reverse of the ladder then we've got wicker which this uh it, it's a little different from better with wolves in this aspect where it does dusts sands and piles only uh it, it actually doesn't work with uh seeds as far as uh, my testing goes you toss seeds on there they will bounce 
I can throw things like this on there, it's not going to work. But if I have some some kind of like sand, we've got different types of sand. We've got your regular sand, we've got your piles of sand, because when you break them by hand, that's what you actually get back is like three piles of sand. You can throw both of those in there and they go into its internal inventory. As you can see, we've got piles of gravel and dirt. Uh, you can try throwing regular dirt on there, or grass, and it's it's not going to filter. Uh, it also excludes soul sand, so that is that because that's a solid block and not actually a, a sandy type. It doesn't fall, therefore it's it's not going to be part of that. So and once again, those also can be used as like a one block tall wall uh, that you can just you know one block high. So they're not going to be good for keeping animals unless you double stack them, but they're also good like that. And if you use it for things like uh, gravel. As I stated in my previous video, toss gravel in there and you'll actually get back flint and a possible output of uh, either regular sand or red sand with a 50% chance of one or both of those uh, as a byproduct when you are filtering gravel. So on top of that, you then have the danger stuff, which is, <laughs> which is of course going to be soul sand as a filter, which is used to filter souls but it's also used to filter xp or you know your your levels in minecraft so in this case i have an urn and i demonstrated this in my other video so i'm not going to go into too much detail about it but if you place a regular urn underneath and you throw things like a uh, ground netherrack or soul dust in there you will end up getting different byproducts back hellfire dust and sawdust will actually pop back out on top of it uh, and then inside of this it will start so storing souls of which you can then put in several more if you get up to eight it will spawn a ghast into the area and then you'll have to kill it most likely so let's just and it will also break in the process uh, unless this is powered if this is powered or it has uh, an urn underneath then you're safe. Uh, it basically will will not do anything bad. But if it doesn't have an urn underneath, there's nothing to catch the uh, gas that will pop out on on the last one. So in this case, there we go. It it just kind of broke, and spawned one out there. So you're gonna have to be careful that you don't let your gas get away from you. Oh, he, he. there we go, got him. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, even though the soul urn was there, I I went a little bit too nuts with the uh, the amount of stuff there. As you can see, I I did like two sets of them. You only want to do one. I still got the soul urn because that pops off of there after the first uh, set, but yeah, they're only going to hold so much in those soul urns, which you can use for crafting and making other things later on. Now, I did mention that the the, the, uh, the filtered hopper with soul sand will also store XP. Allow me to demonstrate. I have bottles O enchanting here. I also have this set up so that you can see it is currently not powered as you can see here there is no movement going on if i flick this lever everything starts powering and the uh, filtered hopper gets power right now power is off so if i go up here and i throw some xp bottles uh, or bottle o enchanting on here uh, i'm just using these as an example throwing a whole bunch of these out it will then start having all sorts of like the xp globes and stuff uh, you'll probably notice, yeah, I'm actually still a little bit close for some of this, that they disappear into the soul sand. Uh, let's get a little bit closer so that they fall. There we go. As they go down. If the soul sand was not being used as a filter, it would just sit on top and bounce. For example, if I take it out. There we go. Uh, and now I start tossing a bunch of these down in there. You can start seeing all sorts of XP globes bouncing inside. And there's a ton of them, small ones, big ones, everything like that. If I put one in there, they instantly get sucked up and put into it. Nothing drops out. But as soon as I flick this lever, you'll notice that it gets powered. It will then combine all the XP orbs into large XP orbs for you to pick up at your own, uh, you know, when you would like to. There you go. They're all large XP. Change into survival mode, open the gate, and there we go. Uh, yes, I, I have a lot of levels right now, but that's that's pretty much how it works. Uh, a, a simple way of actually storing some XP for your own use, um, and also combining tons of little tiny XP orbs into large ones. Very handy. So I think that just about does it for today's little bit by bit on Better With Mods, covering the dangers of vases and filtered hoppers, as well as their benefits. I hope you enjoyed. If so, please be sure to give a like. 
uh, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to spread the mischief to others. I think that they'll enjoy this kind of content too. And if you want to support the mischief, just check the description below. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.